chapter 17, Augustus Gloop goes up the pipe. When Mr Wonka turned around and saw what Augustus Gloop was doing, he cried out, Oh no, please Augustus, please, I beg of you not to do that. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Augustus, called out Mrs Gloop, didn't you hear what the man said? Come away from that river at once. This stuff is fabulous, said Augustus, taking not the slightest notice of his mother and Mr Wonka. Gosh, I need a bucket to drink it properly. Augustus, cried Mr Wonka, hopping up and down and waggling his stick in the air. You must come away, you are dirtying my chocolate. Augustus, cried Mr. Mrs Gloop. Augustus, cried Mr Gloop. But Augustus was deaf to everything except the call of his enormous stomach. He was now lying full length on the ground with his head far out over the river, lapping up the chocolate like a dog. Augustus, shouted Mrs Gloop, you'll be giving that nasty cold of yours to about a million people all over the country. Be careful, Augustus, shouted Mr Gloop, you're leaning too far out. Mr Gloop was absolutely right, for suddenly there was a shriek and then a splash and into the river went Augustus Gloop and in one second he disappeared under the brown surface. Save him, screamed Mrs Gloop, glowing white, going white in the face and waving her umbrella about. He'll drown, he can't swim a yard, save him, save him. Good heavens, woman, cried Mr Gloop. I'm not diving in there, I've got my best suit on. Augustus Gloop's face came up again to the surface, painted brown with chocolate. Help, help, fish me out. Don't just stand there, Mrs Gloop screamed at Mr Gloop. Do something. I am doing something, said Mr Gloop, who was now taking off his jacket and get ready to dive into the chocolate. But while he was doing this, the wretched boy was being sucked closer and closer to the mouth of one of the great pipes that was dangling down into the river. Then all at once, the powerful suction took hold of him completely and he was pulled under the surface and then into the mouth of the pipe. The crowd on the riverbank waited breathlessly to see if he would come out. There he goes, somebody shouted, pointing upwards. And sure enough, because the piper was made of glass, Augustus Gloop could be clearly seen shooting up the inside of it, head first like a torpedo. Help! Murder! Police! screamed Mrs Gloop. Augustus, come back at once. Where are you going? It's a wonder to me, said Mr Gloop, how the pipe is big enough for him to get through it. It isn't big enough, said Charlie Bucket. Oh dear, look, he's slowing down. So he is, said Grandpa Joe. He's going to stick said Charlie. I think he is, said Grandpa Joe. By golly, he has stuck, said Charlie. It's his stomach that's done it, said Mr Gloop. He's blocked the whole pipe, said Grandpa Joe. Smash the pipe, yelled Mrs Gloop, waving her umbrella. Augustus, come out of there at once. The watchers below could see the chocolate swishing around the boy in the pipe and they could see it building up behind him in a solid mass, pushing against the blockage. The pressure was terrific. Something had to give. Something did give, and that something was Augustus. Woof! Up he shot again like a bullet in the barrel of a gun. He's disappeared, yelled Mrs Gloop. Where does that pipe go? Quick, call the fire brigade. Keep calm, cried Mr Wonka. Keep calm, my dear lady, keep calm. There is no danger, no danger whatsoever. Augustus had gone on a little journey, that's all. A most interesting little journey. But he'll come out of it just fine, you wait and see. How can he possibly come out of it just fine, snapped Mrs Gloop. He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds. Impossible, cried Mr Wonka. Unthinkable, inconceivable, absurd. He could never be made into marshmallows. And why not, I may ask, shouted Mrs Gloop. Because that pipe doesn't go anywhere near it. That pipe, the one Augustus went up, happens to lead directly into the room where I make the most delicious kind of strawberry-flavoured chocolate-coated fudge. Then he'll be made but into strawberry flavoured chocolate coated fudge, Saint screamed Mrs Gloop. My poor Augustus, they'll be selling him by the pound all over the country tomorrow morning. Quite right, said Mr Gloop. I know I'm right, said Mrs Gloop. It's beyond a joke, said Mr Gloop. Mr Wonka doesn't seem to think so, cried Mrs Gloop. Just look at him, he's laughing, his head off. How dare you laugh like that when my boy's just gone up the pipe, you monster, she shrieked, pointing her umbrella at Mr Wonka as though she were going to run through him. You think it's a joke, don't you? You think that sucking my boy up into your fudge room like that is just one great big colossal joke. He'll be perfectly safe, said Mr Wonka, giggling slightly. He'll be chocolate fudge, sweet Mrs Gloop. Never, cried Mr Wonka. Of course he will. Uh, shrieked Mrs Gloop. I wouldn't allow it, cried Mr Wonka. And why not? Shrieked Mrs Gloop. Because the taste would be terrible, said Mr Wonka. 
Just imagine it, Augustus-flavoured chocolate-coated gloop. No one would buy it. They most certainly would, cried Mr Gloop indignantly. I don't want to think about it, shrieked Mrs Gloop. Nor do I, said Mr Wonka. And I do promise you, madam, that your darling boy is perfectly safe. If he's perfectly safe, then where is he? snapped Mrs Gloop. Lead me to him this instant. Mr Wonka turned around and clicked his fingers sharply. Click, 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 three times. Immediately an umpalumper appeared, as if from nowhere, and stood beside him. The umpalumper bowed and smiled, showing beautiful white teeth. His skin was rosy white. His hair was long golden brown, and the top of his head came just above the height of Mr Wonka's knee. He wore the usual deer skin slung over his shoulders. Now listen to me, said Mr Wonka, looking down at the tiny man. I want you to take Mr and Mrs Gloop to the fudge room and help them find their son Augustus. He's just gone up the pipe. The Uncle Umpa Lumpa took one look at Mrs Gloop and exploded into peals of laughter. Oh, do be quiet, said Mr Wonka. Control yourself, pull yourself together. Mrs Gloop doesn't think it's at all funny. You can say that again, said Mrs Gloop. Go straight to the fudge room, Mr Wonka said to the Umpa Lumpa. And when you get there, take a long stick and start poking around inside the big chocolate mixing barrel. I'll be almost certain you'll find him in there, but you better look sharp. You'll have to hurry. If you leave him in the chocolate mixing barrel too long, he's liable to get poured into the fudge boiler, and that really would be a disaster, wouldn't it? My fudge would become quite uneatable. Mrs Gloop let out a shriek of fury. I'm joking, said Mr Wonka, giggling madly behind his beard. I didn't mean it. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Mrs Gloop. And goodbye, Mr Gloop. I'll see you later. And Mr and Mrs Gloop and their tiny escort hurried away. The five umpalumpas on the far side of the river suddenly began hopping and dancing about and beating wildly on a number of very small drums. Augustus Gloop, they chanted. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop. Grandpa, cried Charlie. Listen to them, Grandpa. What are they doing? Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe. I think they're going to sing a song. Augustus Gloop, chanted the umpalumpas. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, the great big greedy nincompoop. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guzzle, feed and feast on everything he wanted to? Great Scott, it simply wouldn't do. However long this pig might live, we're positive he'd never give even the smallest bit of fun or happiness to anyone. So what we do in cases such as this, we use the gentle touch and carefully we take the brat and turn him into something that will give great pleasure to us all. A doll, for instance, or a ball, or marbles, or a rocking horse. But this revolting boy, of course, was so unutterly vile, unutterably vile, so greedy, foul, and infantile, he left a most disgusting taste inside our mouths, and so in haste. We chose a thing that, come what may, would take the nasty taste away. Come on, we cried, the time is ripe to send him up the shooting pipe. Send him shooting up the pipe. He has to go, it has to be, and very soon he's going to see. Inside the room to which he's gone, some funny things are going on. But don't, dear children, be alarmed. Augustus Gloop will not be harmed. Although, of course, we must admit he might be altered quite a bit. He'll be quite changed from what he's been when he goes through the fudge machine. Slowly the wheels go round and round, the cogs begin to grind and pound. A hundred knives go slice, slice, slice. We add some sugar, cream and spice. We boil him for a minute more until we're absolutely sure that all the greed and all the gold is boiled away once and for all. Then out he comes and now by grace a miracle has taken place. This boy who only just before was loathed by men from shore to shore. This greedy brute, this louse's ear is loved by people everywhere. For who could hate or bear a grudge against a luscious bite of fudge? I told you they loved singing, cried Mr Wonka. Aren't they delightful? Aren't they charming? But you mustn't believe a word they said. It's all nonsense, every bit of it. Are the umpalumpas really joking, Grandpa? asked Charlie. Of course they're joking, answered Grandpa Joe. They must be joking. At least I hope they're joking. Don't you?